This is the last class in our seminar on prayer. I will, be, I will end it with how I began it. I want us to look at a scripture that is so, so powerful and has been a theme to many conferences, a guideline to many movements of prayer. It's out of 2 Chronicles 7.14. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forget, forgive their sins, and I will hear, heal their land. I want to talk about a theme that is so uh, vital in today's uh, situation. It's on the heart of so many churches, so many conferences, so many prayer movements have this as a major objective, is to see revival happen on the earth. I believe many people, even in their understanding of the last days, know that there is first a great harvest before the great judgment. There is a time in which God will move and pour out His Spirit on all flesh. There is that latter rain, just as there was the early rain. And so many people have been praying for revival. And really, when you think of it, when you study the revivals of the past, there is no revival that is not first preceded by a prayer meeting or prayer movement. People must first seek the Lord, must first pray for God to heal their land. And so we see this as, as a, a repeated principle. So we should not just pray for revival and leave it at that. We need to do all of it. We need to humble ourselves. We need to seek to live together in unity because effective praying, and I've talked about this in other sessions, effective praying comes from unity. Unity and then prayer. <laughs> wow, and God visits, God opens up the heavens. And we have this as a principle. But first, there is prayer. I, I really, really want to emphasize the importance of praying if we want to see God moving. In Malachi 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. In other words, God wants to send that, uh, that prophetic uh, uh, announcement of his coming. It's like that herald before the king comes. That herald that announces the coming of the Lord, the kingdom of God, is at hand. <laughs> John the Baptist was that herald that, was, that Malachi was prophesying about. But he says, uh, he will come, he says, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he's coming, says the Lord of hosts. <laughs> so we see this as a, as a principle, but... Uh, not only for this uh, event in history to happen, there had to be those seeking the Lord, delighting in Him. And, uh, and suddenly, everything changes. Everything happens. If you want to change the world, Pastor Cesar Castellanos has told me many times, you want to see the world change, then you have to change. Starts with us. Doesn't just start with something happening supernaturally. It starts with us. We must humble ourselves. We must change. We must turn. We must pray. We must seek His face. Because God is always looking for a person. You know, many times great revivals happen with just one person or two people. Let's don't be weather gazers, those that just say, well, looks like there's going to be rain. Looks like the clouds are dark. It's really getting bad out there. Let's don't be a thermometer. Let's be thermostats. Let's change things. Let's be history changers. Let's look at some of the, of the moves of God in the past. I think the first probably the epic 
move of God happened on the day of Pentecost. And we can look through the book of Acts, first and second chapters, and we can see what the disciples and the 120 that were with them were doing prior to Pentecost, prior to the pouring out of the Spirit. They were in unity, one place, and they were in prayer. They were agreeing in prayer. They were praying. They were spending their time praying. And then suddenly, as the Bible says in Malachi, and suddenly it happened. There was a mighty roaring wind came through. Fire fell, you know. They spoke in tongues. God did amazing things. And many people accepted the Lord in those, that first day. All happened through prayer, a prayer meeting. God visited it. One of the most, um, one of my favorite revival stories happened in Germany in the 1700s. There was a count who had a very large estate. He was a very wealthy man. And uh, he had received some refugees, Moravian refugees from Moravia, uh, a religious group that had been persecuted and then some other people came as well, some brethren that were also being persecuted. And then there were some Lutherans that were also being persecuted. They, they found refuge on his estate. And they lived together in a community. They built a little town called Herrnhut in Saxony, which is in eastern Germany today. They didn't get along because their doctrines were different. Their practices and traditions were so opposite to one another. They began to argue over who was right and who was wrong, who had the best way. Who, who. And so Count Zizendorf went and visited every household, talked to each one. And they drew up in a, a covenant in which they came to agreement as to what essentially they believed in and the behavior that they would commit themselves to. And then in as they all agreed and they came into unity about this, they had a prayer meeting and God visited them. And they were prostrate before the Lord in this prayer meeting and the prayer meeting lasted for 100 years, 24 seven, continued all the time. There was never someone that wasn't there in the prayer room praying for 100 years. And from that little church, and it never grew past 300 people. But from that church, churches were planted in every, every nation of Europe and over 200 missionaries were sent out into remote areas as Nepal, Western Africa, the Americas, South America. They went everywhere, even to the effect of, of influencing and restoring uh, John Wesley on his trip across the ocean, he came back a changed man and became a leader of a, of a movement in, in, um, in England that changed the nation and changed many other nations. <laughs> what can happen when people pray? It's an amazing thing. Then there's the Great Awakening. Jonathan Edwards in the 1700s as well in America all started out of prayer. God began to move. People were just uh, uh, cut to the quick, repented from their sins, and God changed their nation. The second uh, great awakening happened in New York City where thousands and thousands of men would gather every lunch hour. They wouldn't have lunch. They would just gather in the streets of New York to pray together. It was called the Second Great Awakening. And it happened mainly from a men's prayer meeting that grew to be thousands of people would fill the streets and the squares and the parks in New York City to pray, oh, I wish that would happen again. Started from a prayer meeting. Then there's the holiness revivals uh, in the 1800s, all because of prayer. Azusa Street, the Pentecostal movement that has now touched over 600 million people around the world, started in a little small 
uh, church in Pasadena, California, in a prayer meeting, that God poured out His Spirit. One of my favorite revivals that had such a, uh, an amazing effect started with just two people, two sisters. It was Peggy and Christine Smith. Peggy was 84. Christine was 82. And they started praying for revival. They were in the Hebrides and the islands in the, northern, in the North Sea, northern Scotland. As, as they were praying, their group never got more than 30 people. But sometimes they'd be praying all night long. And God began to, people would be walking by and fall on their face in repentance. Ships that uh, passed by, cargo ships and commercial liners would come by and all of their crew would fall, when they came close to that island, would fall in repentance, conviction of the Holy Spirit. Why? Peggy and Christine were praying. You see, prayer precedes God's move. Do you desire to see a move of God? Well, if you want to see God move, then you need to move. You need to be moved by the Spirit into prayer. There's many others. There's the Toronto Revival of, the 18, of 1983, Lakeland Revival in 89, Brownsville Revival in 95. So many different revivals have taken place. And all because people first got together to pray. They humbled themselves. All their agendas came, became second. All their programs for the church became second as they prioritized prayer. And they saw that as more important than anything else they did. There's been movements based on prayer and praise God for that. There's a, uh, there were some back in the fourth century and as you study church history, you'll see that, that the church has moved forward in history because people prayed. There was a group in, um, in Europe, they were called, uh, uh, started from Alexander Akamet, and he started a group where it says, these are those who do not sleep. <laughs> How would you like to be a part of this prayer meeting? They were the, those who don't sleep. In other words, they prayed nights through. They prayed and prayed. And God moved. In the midst of a, of a time in which truth was being lost, religion was taking over the very uh, life of the church. They were losing so much of their early vigor. And yet there was a group that would not stop praying and God has maintained all throughout history there has always been someone that has had the heart to pray and God has continued his purposes no matter what the darkness of the generation in which we live or the challenges that face us prayer is the key we need to prioritize it in our lives. It stops, starts with us. There's movements like the 24-7 House of Prayer, Kansas City, that now has many, many places around the earth of those that are actually doing that, that are praying 24-7. Put that as a priority. Their ministry has grown. Their influence has, has changed the way many people are doing church because they're they have listened to the Lord and put that as a priority. Yangi Cho has the largest church in the world. And his secret, and he's very bold to say it, came from his praying mother. In fact, they started a mountain of prayer where they could have 24-7 of prayer going on all the time. And I've been to that mountain. And there are scores of those same mountains of prayer by other church groups in Korea. And now Korea, who in the 1900s was the least evangelized nation on earth, now is the most evangelized nation on earth. 
with mega churches in many denominations. Started through a prayer movement, started by the praying of dedicated women that created a movement of prayer called the Prayer Mountain. People would go and have retreats and they would go in their little cubbyhole, little places where they would just separate themselves just to pray. Thousands of people all the time. There's movements, there's calls to pray. pray. There's uh, healing rooms where the, ma the majority of the time is spent in prayer. And then there's healing as an aspect or a result of that, those prayers. So much has been, uh, has been happening um, around the world to alert the church to get back to their priority, to their main calling is to first minister to God in prayer and then to others through his power. So I would just encourage you, my brothers and sisters, and that, uh, that you would take these teachings uh, and apply it in your life. If prayer has been something that has been difficult for you, I would encourage you just to do it anyway until it becomes a delight. Any habit is only formed through repetition. These things that are of God have an inner resistance. It's called the flesh. The flesh fights against the things of the Spirit. It is God's desire that we pray. And so for sure, it is the flesh's desire that we don't pray. So we must put that to death. Put it aside so that we can go forth in God's purpose. Say no to yourself and yes to God. Set that time aside. If you can only do 10 minutes, do 10 minutes. Then increase it to 15, then to 20. Until at least an hour you're spending in prayer a day. And more is even better. Lord bless you in this prayer adventure as you see God moving through you and for you. Lord bless. Thank you.